All right. In this video, we are going to look at the decision trees. And uh, in the previous video, we looked at the driver analysis for the data set where we are predicting the total claim amount given the car information, claim information, and the car owner information, right? So what you need to do here is that you need to add a new card. I'm gonna go new. I'm gonna click on the choose type and I'm gonna scroll down to the advanced analytics group and I'm gonna select decision tree. There we go. So what does that do? It added the new card with a decision tree. But right, right now I have an empty visualization because I have to specify the target. So I'll click here to show the details, to show the slots. And right now the data slot is empty. So I need to specify that I want to look at the total claim amount. There we go. Now, here, what we could do is we go into close the data slot here. We go into close this panel on the left as well. Now, you may find the decision tree diagram is a little bit hard to read. However, the three nodes can be expanded and collapsed. So I click on the three node to collapse part of the tree, right? This is what you will have to do also to take screenshot in the assignment. You want to collapse part of the tree that you're not looking at and only keep expanded part of the tree that you're looking at, right? So here it is. The way we read this tree is that we start traversing the tree from the left-hand side. So here, our, our first the column that we're looking at is a vehicle class. For instance, if the vehicle class is a two-door car, then we take the first pass. We're going to arrive to the next split, which is employment, employment status, right? So if an individual is employed, we take the top branch. Next is monthly premium auto and etc. We keep traversing the tree until we arrive to the leaf node or also known as terminal node, right? And the terminal node we end up in is and determines an average total claim amount. Notice that each node has a color code. The darker the color, the, the higher is the average total claim amount. So, uh, what you could also do is if you hover over the node, you see the average total claim amount of all records that fall into that node. For example, in here, my data has 9,136 records. And I see here, if I hover over the root node, right? The top node is the root node. I'm gonna see the overall average and the overall standard deviation for all data. Then here, this is the average for the two-door two car, right? And over here, I also see how many two-door cars do I have? And I see there are all about 6,500 cars with two doors, which is 71% of my data, right? So now I keep going and I looked at the employed and see, I see 4,100, 45% of my data falls into here. And I keep on traversing this tree until I reach the end. And then at the very end, I see in, in, this, in this node, I have 650, right? Small vehicle size, I see 650. And I see the average. Let's see if I can click on this. Nope, it does not expand any farther. So it means this node is the last node. And then if I click on it, if I click on it, I can see the path from the root node to the leaf node highlighted. All right. And in here, it just the color legend. It tells me approximately what color code is. What color code it's. It represents the average total claim amount. So basically the darkest one is about 1500 
and the lightest one is about 256, right? So uh, what I could also do right now, I'm, I, I selected to choose all. I could also see the leaf nodes that have the bottom five values or the leaf nodes that have the top five values, right? I can filter out my data. I, I, can, I can filter the tree, right? To, to see, perhaps I want to see only the top, right? Or only the bottom values. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, select all again, right? Let's look at how, let's discuss how this is being generated. It selects, it's, it's using some internal statistics to select the predictor that is most significant. In this case, it's a vehicle class, right? Then it uses this to split. Then it's gonna pick the next most significant predictor. It's looking at what's called information gain, right? So uh, it's looking through different uh, options and it's gonna pick the one that gives the most gain, that gives the most strength of the method. And you might be wondering when the splitting stops. Well, there are several criteria. First of all, the decision tree cannot have more than 36 nodes. This is related to the software. The decision tree cannot have more than 36 nodes. So if I already have 36 nodes, it's gonna stop, all right? Next is how many uh, rows, how many data rows fall into each node? Uh, for, for Cognos Analytics, you cannot have less than 25. So there should be at least 25 rows or also called observations that fall into the node. Otherwise, you cannot split, right? If, if the child node has less than 25, you cannot do the split. You have to merge back, right? So this is the visual representation of the trees rule. And again, if I have the brand new claim, I should be able to start from the top and traverse my tree to get the average claim amount. Now what we're gonna look at is the rules. The actual rules, this is basically, it's taking the average claim val value and in here are the characteristics of claims that get this value, okay? This is the average claim amount. In here, those are the characteristics, if you will, of the cars and the car owners and claim type, right? In here, I see that this rule in here is applicable to 78 records or less than 1% of my data. And here I see the vehicle class, employment status, and here are the coverage effective to date. So if I have uh, effective if I know my effective to date, if I know employee status, right? And if I know the vehicle class, I look it up. If more or less my new claim falls into this rule, then on the left column, this is what's gonna be the average predicted total claim amount and et cetera. This list is sorted by predicted value. It's doing it descending. I can also do, I can sort it ascending if I want to. So see this, this is the smallest value. And uh, here it tells me the vehicle class, employee status, monthly premium here, right? Is less than 94 and the vehicle size, mid size and large. And as you can see, about 30% of data falls into this category, right? So you know that if your new claim is a two door a car, and uh, the car owner is employed and monthly premium is below 94 and the vehicle is either mid-sized or large, then probably more likely this is what's going to be the, the expected uh, payment, right? The expected claim amount, total claim amount. All right. So you can just look at these rules at your leisure and also play around with the diagram. 
you can expand nodes, you can collapse nodes, and it might take a little bit of trial and error to take the screenshot, all right? And only take a screenshot of portion of the tree that you're discussing in the paper. You don't need to take the whole tree. Another thing that is important is this. Look, I'm going to go to the data slots now. And similar to what we did in the driver analysis, I can change which columns I'm using as predictors. Look, I'm going to click here on the target, right? I click here, and then I choose edit drivers. And then I have an option to uncheck the columns that I don't want. In any case, I don't want to be used for my analysis at all. And the tree is going to adjust for me based on the choice that I made. All right. So this is what you will need to do for your uh, assignment. You're asked to build two models. But remember that the target variable is the same. In your data, the target variable will be the same. But to build two models, you're probably going to use different drivers, or you might be looking at the subset of data, perhaps, right? All right. So hopefully, you found this presentation helpful. Thank you for watching this video, and have a nice day.